Welcome to the Burke's Homes podcast, the business of building homes. I'm Katie. I'm here with my brother, Ben. And today we are talking about brand, branding and all things brand. And I have so many thoughts about this. Ben, are you so hyped to hear me get on my soapbox today? Well, you always need a stool anyway. So. <laughs> you nailed the, <laughs> you know, that's like the fifth time in a row that you really nailed the uh, intro. I'm very impressed. I would never remember it. Oh, I mean, it took me. <laughs> I would need me a script. So many times to remember every piece and it's like two yeah. sentences. Yeah. So where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said it today. <laughs> um, I, we were talking about this because I'm a little spicy about it today i have thoughts and feelings and we weren't even on this topic at all but since i had notes we thought we would talk about it today so there have been some things popping up here and there in my travels over the past couple of weeks where i'm realizing that maybe we have never articulated why brand is so important yeah to the organization we don't talk about it a lot and to start Brand is not marketing. <laughs> Very Number true. Number one, we would consider our brand or just that branding in general is kind of the physical embodiment of your culture, who you are. You know, a picture, you know, says a thousand words. <laughs> yeah. And you're not changing it all the time. No, it's it's the same thing as your core values, your guiding principles. You know, it's a consistent decision to show people what you can even show your core values and your culture through visualization through your brand through your font your colors or lack thereof Mm -hmm. through the words that you use through the tone and so there's all sorts of things we've got you know a 15 page document that lays it out which nobody probably even knows but that goes to show how much thought goes into it Oh, absolutely. It's very, very intentional. Let's just start with our logo. The reason it's a square that -hmm. just says Burke's Home since 1973 with no color is because we want to portray that we are dependable, transparent, stable. We've Mm -hmm. been around since 1973. We're transparent. We are Burke's Homes. We are dependable and solid, not flashy. A nice box, you know, steady Eddie, steady Eddie, and and we're your guy. You can trust us. Right. We are just oozing trustworthiness with oh, our logo. Trust. Yeah. Yes. We've talked that's about the that. whole yeah. point. Yeah. Our brand matches our guiding principles perfectly. It's been around for a long time. Not just the logo. Yeah. But all these things have not changed, and that's what you're trying to communicate. Well, yes, that's exactly right. So this concept started even with when dad started designing homes Mm -hmm. let's take it way back you know let's take it back to the 80s when he started really deciding that he wanted people to be able to drive into their community at the end of the day and be proud of the home that they purchased that you just get a sense of it just feels good when you drive into your driveway look at what i have at the no matter what happened guess what i get to come home to (sighs) Life is good. And just the, the small choices that he continues to make to this day of the elevations and the placement of things, being very, you know, conscious of the financial piece. You know, yeah. he's not just blowing it out to make it look great. He's right. he's considering, I mean, you know, you can speak to this all day. You've listened to him and, you know, had to go through this, you know, thought process with purchasing and estimating for years. Like you te- you talk about his philosophy well, for it's, a second. Yeah, it's it's all about the combination of price, quality, service, mm-hmm. and the best of all of those. And so anybody can solve problems by throwing money at it. Yeah. You can always make things more expensive Mm -hmm. to make them look nice. Right. But can you make them look nice without breaking the bank Mm -hmm. and saying there's most of the people will value this look at this dollar amount. Right. Most people. Mm -hmm. And that's always that's always been part of it. And it's also about value. Like it's. 
it's returning value back to them Mm -hmm. saying that yeah this isn't going to be fifty thousand dollars extra it's going to be ten and there's an equal exchange of value it's like what we talked about last week where you leave a little bit left over for the other party even visually visual well visually it starts visually yeah exactly and it doesn't always work to to get that best combination Mm. sometimes it is more expensive than we would like it to be or sometimes to make a price point so somebody can get in the home it's not quite as visually appealing as we would love to have it absolutely but the magic is doing your best to get there right you know and that's that's the intention behind our product is to visually represent that value Right. And again, that's part of who we are. That's part of our brand. Not only is it the elevations, but it's the color packages that we pick. You know, we Correct. we have an entire exterior package portfolio that is very intentional. There, we get a lot of feedback about it, but it's our brand. It's how we're trying to represent who we are. We aren't flashy we aren't extravagant. We aren't trendy. Right. We're That's important. We're classy. Yeah. yeah. We're subtle. It's very cohesive. It, and, you know, that could be considered boring or, you know, even, well, it's very, tr- it's, it's very on trend, not trendy, everything that we do. But at the same time, it's intentional. Yeah. You know? Why is it important now? Oh, that's a good question. It's always been important, right? but we're noticing as we scale already with just three regions, it's starting to get lost, mm-hmm. that consistent visual representation of who we are, because I don't know why it's getting lost in translation right now. That's that's a problem we're trying to solve. That's why we're talking that's about it. That's why we're talking about it, exactly. Yeah. But it's important because there is something to be said about having that visualization match your culture, match your experience. Yeah. And if we can't capture that and make it happen in three regions, we won't be able to do it at scale. So, so we have to figure it out now. You know, let me sum up. Yeah, please. If you if you're really good at communicating your brand Mm -hmm. standards, image, whatever you want to get out there to your people. Yeah. If you're really intentional about that, it should be easy for them to do their job. Oh, yeah. It takes away the like decision making process for so many things. You know, you don't you don't go to Chick-fil-A and the one in Chicago gives you a plastic blue bag with your food in it. Right. And then the one in Florida gives you a brown paper bag. That's not how it works. They don't need to make those decisions. It's thought for them. Mm-hmm. The decisions that they have to make day to day is is the relationships. So that's a huge piece of this is getting all the small, like, I guess I shouldn't say small, but all of the decisions that you have to make about who who the, who the Burke's Homes is and how to represent ourselves, you don't have to think about it. Don't reinvent the You don't have to wheel. think about a paper that you hand someone. You don't have to think about a gift that you hand someone. Those mm-hmm. are all branded, all completely thought out with our font. Mm-hmm. With It's very intentional. You get right. a candle in the beginning so you don't have to pack it up and move it to your new house. Yeah. You get a cutting board at the end so you can use it in your home. And it's not branded on top where they have to see us. It's about them. It's about the customer. These are all the small things that we've already thought through that right. they no one has to reinvent right. at a regional level. What they get to do then is look the human being in the eye and have a relationship with them because we can't do that. Yeah, We're here setting the visualization and the stage saying, here, this is who we are. All they have to do is be it right? with the, the home buyer. Then. And going back to Chick-fil-A, that, that's something that they do very well. Yeah. And at their store level, their employees aren't thinking about, you know, maybe I need a new bag. Or It's you, all just there. You know, I don't think we should have uh, this sandwich on the menu. Yeah, we need a hamburger. Right. What? <laughs> no. Yeah. It, they, it's, I think it's subtle, but it's really important. Mm-hmm. It's, it's critical, not just because we're growing, but, you know, this is a message for anybody yeah. out there trying to operate their business mm-hmm. in it, terms of, you know, and then there's the fine line of innovation. Right. right? Well, well, what 
I'm trying to say is there's efficiencies in just following what we've already have set up. You know, why would we pay 150 people to do the same thing that's already done? Okay, move on from that. But the innovation could be, you know, yeah, this is a great thought, but where do we store this stuff? Or, yeah, yeah this mm-hmm. is a great thought, but like in practice, it's it's actually impractical. That's the feedback that we want. Right. Maybe the visualization is correct, but the execution, it doesn't work. Absolutely bring those things up, and that's where the we need the regions to innovate. Going back know? to the floor mat yes. or the front door mat example of last week where they're there could be a lot of innovation around it, but the mm-hmm. floor mat is the floor mat. Yeah, this is what it looks like, and the reason it says this is because it communicates something about who we are. Did I say floor mat? Isn't it doormat? Yeah, it is doormat. Floor mat's probably in a car. <laughs> okay. Or was All right, it? it's a doormat. What are you selling? Cars. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So there's that piece of innovation that we really want to encourage encourage and and have have at the forefront of everybody's mind and Mm -hmm. how to get more efficient yeah but the real key is having the embodiment of the brand Mm -hmm. embedded in them yeah that is that's what you should focus on Mm -hmm. as an employee absolutely i need to focus as much as i can on understanding who we are Mm -hmm. so I can always be communicating that well and that's why we probably don't really talk about brand that much because it's just following the guiding principles correct so as an employee it's just creating that trust with people creating a long-lasting relationship being helpful humble aware driven and being a major league player so it's just doing all of those things the brand just eliminates the need to think about how yeah (laughs) you know right right. this is like oh okay well in order to you know build trust i will send this templated email that is perfectly laid out for me you know that says oh you know my your house is being drawn right now home buyer i know we have no updates for you but i could send you this right yeah Yeah. what kind of let me ask you it's kind of off topic not really but you had sales training this week right Mm -hmm. how did that go that was great was was this idea inserted into that at all or is was it subtle no you mean this week yeah i don't well okay true truthfully i wasn't there because it's during our eo wednesday eo meeting so it was a lot of just refresher of you know and it is the same thing. This is what we do. We've got these tools for you. Remember this thing we talked about a year ago? Still here. You can use it. Yeah. This is a refresher on how you use the tools that we have available. In some ways, it's, I mean, I, I always like to dumb things down. <laughs> same. It's just making everybody's jobs easier. Yes. And, yeah. And, brand identity it's all inserted all along the way in that concept yeah well and this maybe all we're talking about for all time is is clubhouse and you know consistency and alignment but to continue from last week if we want to take the floor doormat idea (laughs) and expand on that that kind of helped us come up with the idea of requirements versus recommendations and that's what this is also yeah the end result of what we want something to be is a burke's homes requirement it's taken care of it's done that idea right so at this step in the home selling building settling process we require the end result to look like this Mm -hmm. so then we can list all the recommendations in the world we have found in our 50 years of home building it's the easiest if you do it this way but you don't have to that's where the innovation comes in if you come up with a better way fantastic tell us we'll add it to the the recommendations for everybody else right but we require that you wear a beautiful branded hard hat on the job site yeah you know that's a requirement if you want it rolling around in your truck all the time, that's totally fine with you. If you, However you want to carry it around, get a clip for your belt. It's fine. Do whatever you want. 
Doesn't matter to us. Right, right. Just wear it. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what I'm saying is the requirements piece. Getting those things documented and laid out for everyone will make this a lot easier. Yeah. That's that's something that we're learning very quickly as we're getting into more of the the day-to-day how many things could be answered if we just said, this is what we want the end result to look like, guys. Yeah, maybe some of it is being intentional on our part of... Absolutely. ...sticking to specifics Mm -hmm. of what the result should be. Yeah. And that's it. So inserting this in the middle of our conversation, if you have anything right now that you don't know what the end result should look like or you're working on solving a problem we probably can help yeah please bring it up immediately (laughs) yeah well there's a lot of new people too i know exactly you you have to remember whenever you initiate a new thing or kick off something that you used to do there's still new people absolutely so it's a new day right for a certain group Mm -hmm. and Whenever we do a company meeting, you're thinking, oh, this is the drill. This is how we do this. And no, there's 40 new people. They've never done it. Yeah. Explain it. I still have to say where the bathroom is in the room every single time. Yeah. People weren't here last year. Right. (laughs) What is it? Mm Mm-hmm. So that's, that's that's always a challenge. But it gets easier over time. Yeah. I do think that we've gotten a lot of energy around the clubhouse idea. Sure. I don't know about you, but I've... I've heard a lot of people being excited. Yeah. And yes. And really it all comes down to they everybody wants the same thing, mm-hmm. which is to be doing the same things. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Consistency. Mm-hmm. The, the people are yearning for it. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm excited about that too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So now I know, then that's that's where I, ca- I came in hot into this room saying I need to talk about some things mm-hmm. after the podcast. Right. You're like, well, let's just talk about it. Then. Sure. For me, I'm understanding not just at the cl- the clubhouse level, not just the coaches. It's all the support departments around the day to day selling building settling homes that need to be inserted into that training into that consistency because where we where will we talk about the importance of our brand representation yeah where will we talk about why we use the products that we do what's the narrative around using this floor plan in this situation we have to document that and put that somewhere to explain it Mm -hmm. because there are reasons behind everything that we do everything we create yeah. really everything yeah mm-hmm. there's a it could be subliminal because the creator has is a creative yeah and is not articulating yeah. their creative flow you know if you if you take all of the I, I keep coming back to our floor plans because this is just such a easy way to explain what we're talking about we have made an intentional shift in our product lineup over the past two years and there's a reason why you would use this floor plan now versus that one right and there you know maybe we need to look at archiving some because the thought process and representation of what we offer now has shifted a little bit yeah well it's market driven yeah you know but but it's still us right it's that combination of answering the market answering the market Mm -hmm. in our style Right. right exactly and yeah, we've had a lot of success with it, and it's just funny, <laughs> funny uh, reading these headlines now of X builder, giant builder, mm-hmm. dis- says the new trend for twenty twenty four is smaller floor plans. <laughs> Try twenty twenty two. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we'll all follow. Welcome now. to the party. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they think they can set the market, and they do in a lot of cases. But mm-hmm. it's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> who, who decided that? Right. What else do you think that, what, what have you been getting energy around this week? I was going to ask you that. You mean just in general or like yeah, what? Yeah, just like what, what are you hyped about right now? Besides um, getting on my soapbox about yeah. brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are you hyped about? <laughs> That's my number one mm-hmm. right now. No That's question. Easy, though. Number two is well you brought up the sales training which is interesting because i am going through 
the online sales consultant training right now because yourself myself yeah because we have a new OSE starting Mm -hmm. Megan Mm -hmm. Jones has transferred over from well she is in the middle of it she will be over time going from on your land into online sales Mm -hmm. which is really exciting and so she started her training this week and I was in the intro call and I got hyped about it yeah because I was like, this is it's what a we really do. great program. Yeah. I want to, can I just, let me follow along. Tag along. I'm not, it is a lot. And it is thorough and it is impressive. I can't actually do everything that they're required to do. Right. Like with answering all of, like taking these notes and tests and all this stuff. This is a sophisticated program. So that's also got me thinking about training. Well, Let me take one second. Yeah. There's a reason why Kelly was nominated for a national award. She won a silver award. Yes. Yes. She won a silver award. Mm -hmm. So because it's it's a big job and on our scorecard, her metrics are on there Mm -hmm. because it's so important. And it's... She does such a fantastic job documenting and being consistent with everything that we can predict our sales based off of her numbers. Yeah, I think that's that can't be understated. And this is for any business out there that that desires to have predictable metrics or predictable results from metrics Mm -hmm. like a scorecard. There's a ton of power in understanding what is going to create a sale. Mm-hmm. Like if I have this number, I know I will get X yeah. sales or yep. revenue or whatever you want to want to call it because we can look at those every week and we just know, boom, mm-hmm. this is what it's going to correlate to. The power is in knowing the total goal mm-hmm. and your conversion. Well, yeah, the, so, the combination. Yeah, and that is something huge that I think a lot of people miss when they're looking at data. Mm-hmm. They're just looking at that number and going, oh, look, that number's bigger. Not knowing that, you know, you, it doesn't matter what that looks like if you aren't tracking what the conversion is from that to the next, you know. Correct. So that's that's something huge that shout out to Do You Convert right. for their program training. Yeah their metric tracking, Mm -hmm. understanding that conversion concept and teaching it, that's so huge. Right. And it's it's an impressive program. That's for every business though. Mm -hmm. You know Oh absolutely. Like I said, if if you want to have one takeaway today, it's understand how you get sales consistently and what the metrics are behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Because then once you start predicting it, then you can just start tweaking stuff. You want more sales? You need more of this number. Right. Mm-hmm. And then how do you get more of ha- that number? Yeah. Do this. Yeah. You just, it's mm-hmm. just drilling down into the details. So, training, you were on training. Oh, I interrupted you. No, that's totally yeah. fine. Yeah. So, then that got me full circle thinking about how to incorporate some of the messaging and support departments into the training that we will be doing with the coaches oh, and okay. the clubhouse. Yes. So, so. At what point does Creative put a program together for every customer facing employee or anyone who orders something or, you know, where does that get put in their Mm. how to manual? Yeah. You know, this is why. Yeah. That's what you mean. Exactly. Or or even this is why and how Mm -hmm. this is the tools. These are the tools you have. You don't have to think about this. Right. Just order. Yeah. Again, I I mean, because maybe I'm lazy. Or maybe I, I always like to simplify. Why wouldn't you? If somebody's giving you the well, answers to the test. Sure. I And I, I've been thinking a lot about this too. And, and I don't want this to feel like we don't want people's creativity and feedback and innovation. Right. To your point, it's not about that piece of it. It's not about squashing the innovation and creativity of, of everyone who's doing the work at no. all. But what we want everyone to understand is we need the creativity and innovation to be in the relationships that they have with their customers. Right. We need that to be be creative with their personalization of their experience. Yeah. So we yes, we give this gift and that gift in during the process. But if you know that 
they are someone in their family passed away and means something. Have a little dedication to them and mm-hmm. let them write something on the studs of their house. Yeah, you know, during the walkthrough. Be creative with who the human being is and what you can bring to surprise and delight them through their experience. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. Just d- draw a little parallel in a, the way that our minds work. Yeah. So I need a little bit of structure to be creative. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you think about the way that you know our neurodivergent minds work, mm-hmm. if you go into chaos, you think, oh, well, your your brain's a mess anyway. Why wouldn't why wouldn't you excel in chaos? That's when we get locked up. Right. So if you give me a little structure, mm-hmm. meaning I don't have to make 10 decisions, then if the first 10 decisions are made for me, yes, then that gives me a lot of room and freedom to make the 11th decision. Yes. Because I can't get through 10. Mm-hmm. I can't think through options mm-hmm. for that first set. Right. Decisions. We want your energy to be put towards the important decision of how to react to the human being in front of you. There you go. You know. Yeah. So for me, it makes a ton of sense. That's why I'm always trying to simplify. Mm-hmm. I'm trying Same. to get rules put in place, not big rules where it feels overwhelming or restrictive. Yeah. It's just the simple stuff. Mm-hmm. It's the waking up in the morning and putting on clothes <laughs> that you've already picked out. Yes. Because you can't start your day with a decision. Why do you think we're both wearing a logo shirt right now? Exactly. You don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Burke's homes. <laughs> right. So, but that's how I think of it anyway. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's a really great way to say it. Because it's, it is it is a fatiguing, you know, lifestyle then. Mm-hmm. If you have to invent something yeah. every day. Right. Just to do your job. Mm-hmm. That's overwhelming. Yeah. And again, the creativity, innovation, and feedback that comes from the back and forth is, I understand why you thought this would make my life easier, but actually it's making it harder. Still want to hear that stuff. Sure. You know, how is it, how is the decision we made making it harder? Let's fix that. So again, that stress is taken away during the day-to-day process. It could be, it always could be easier. Mm Mm-hmm. But that the goal is is to always have just an s- exclusive set of decisions right. that you have to make and mm-hmm. s- that interaction. So let me ask you now that, you know, because I can't stop talking about brand. Mm-hmm. Had you ever thought about it before I started talking about it? What was your impression of why we did some things the way we do them? I mean, my mind works possibly differently than most people Mm -hmm. i do i i try to achieve results through absorbing what's in front of me and in place already Mm. and just focusing on what's not set in place Mm -hmm. does that make sense so i embrace this so much because i don't like to innovate everything at the same time yeah it messes me up and so so you already answered the question previously i did okay yeah, i did I, and but i'm not even talking about what we have in place i'm saying your impression oh well i mean i was i was born to do this man you know <laughs> i mean my initials are bh <laughs> that's fair enough you know i don't i don't know that i could ever not make the connection mm-hmm. everything i do i try to represent our family and mm-hmm. business the way it should be so you or I don't try you feel though that we have nailed it yeah absolutely and if you took a Mm cross-section of employees yeah they have it yeah the majority Mm -hmm. right yeah I mean that's a a a successful business would not be successful Mm -hmm. I'm I'm asking because I'm obsessed with it and I want to make sure that we get consistent across the board. But if there's something confusing about it, I wanted to make sure, you know, it, I'm not, you know, coming from the wrong place. To me, I've just been living and breathing it for 
five years now mm-hmm. as we're, we've been standardizing and setting up all of our visual brand and our narrative behind everything. But that's just in our little world, you know. Well, you always have to remember what I said about the company meeting. There's Since we started talking, somebody new probably came on board. Yeah. And so it's what's the cadence of the reminding mm-hmm. and refreshing, yeah. I should say, versus just assuming that, you know, it's just going to happen. Yeah. How would they know? It's a refreshment. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. and and it's a refreshment for us even. Right. Because then we focus on the right things. Yeah. Yeah. To talk about. Mm -hmm. To focus on. Yeah. To take out of the hands of people that are making decisions, say, you don't have to make that decision. You know, uh, I got we you. Need, we need to work on that. We yes. need to clarify. Yeah. We might know it inherently. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what I was saying about like, I mean, I know what it is, mm-hmm. but was it clearly articulated? Most examples probably, but there's always there's always stuff that you know we just haven't- We missed. We haven't hit. Mm-hmm. And to people that are detailed, that's important. Yeah. And we have, we have all types of people, but usually it's those detailed- types that they want to focus on that one thing Mm -hmm. that isn't visually displayed or articulated well they want to just hit on that and they're like what about this yeah you're like well we just figure it out (laughs) using this concept Mm -hmm. and so yeah it's it's probably a an annual thing where it's just retraining re-engaging people and then learning for the first time and that's what the company meetings for some of it Mm -hmm. right yeah it's not just communicating the vision and then talking about the results of last year. It's getting a vibe or showing our vibe to that's, everybody. Yes, it, that's and it's it's humanizing people that you're seeing through screens or you've never even met or you know it's making the connection of oh these are all real people all centered around the same end goal. And this is wanting it for the same reasons. And, you know, it just gets a reinforcement for all the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. In person. And that's next month. Yes. How's the planning going? You know, (laughs) (laughs) great. Yeah. Um, Mom was in here meeting with Chastity. Probably doing centerpieces, I would assume. She is. Okay. So it's right on track. Yeah. It's getting all set up. (laughs) Yeah. We'll have to talk about that. The company um, meeting. Over the next couple months. You know, yeah, it. I love it. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. But, we'll give a recap afterward. That'll be fun. It's going to be the biggest one, obviously. Every year it gets bigger. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good. Okay. Well, listen. Who's your MVP? That's a great question. I have too many every time, especially when I don't have a plan walking into this room. I think that my MVP this week is definitely going to be Dario. <gasps> Dario. Mm-hmm. Super Dario. Because we did the model home at North Hills last week. Yeah. And he was a rock star. This is the first one he's ever done. And we kind of rushed him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it was the first time that he had to schedule a quality walk for a model home. Right. And have a list of things that needed to be done as a result. Not, you know, good, bad, and different. It's just things that... A model home is different. Yeah. You know, so there, there's a, a different list maybe than what you would be used to. And we that happened on a Thursday and then we came on a Monday. <laughs> so he Probably had pulled some long hours, a lot of simultaneous things to work on. And the kicker of it all is that the gas company was supposed to hook up the gas the day that we were moving in, and that got delayed also. Oh, of course it did. So poor guy was coordinating a lot, and he did a fantastic job with protecting his job and his schedule, and he very politely asked us to take a minute, and can we come back in a couple of days? And oh. he got it all yeah. situated, got everything done that he needed to very quickly, had a great attitude. The best yeah. attitude. Yeah. And the house is done for the the model home now. Like, meaning the decorating. Yeah. I don't know about his part. Right. The gas. Godspeed. But yeah. everything else, like, it was it was really, really good thing. Public service message to these public utilities. Oh, my gosh. You know, yes. Get your <laughs> together, you know. <laughs> Super Dario. Brandon, you're going to have to put his picture up during this segment. <laughs> I mean... 
Uh, what a great guy. You just, mm-hmm. you got to fall in love with that guy. Very, very handsome young man. That and, he is. And very charming. Mm-hmm. He's got the uh, Riz, right? That's what they <laughs> the say. The W Riz. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Dario, your first model home. Yes, and so what's your challenge? Well, my challenge would be something along the same lines. You know, my challenges are always generally about people, not process. And I was going to say that it's, I think, maybe like the second one, I said reach out to somebody. Yeah, You know. yes. And I, I was going to say the challenge this time to be reach out to somebody in your sphere. Mm-hmm. And compare notes. Try to get a, a better understanding of what they do. So if you think about the assembly line. Yeah. And, you know, we oftentimes compare ourselves to a manufacturer because mm-hmm. we're doing the same thing over and over. We're just doing it with a lot of outside influence. Yeah. Try to understand the person that you work with the most. Almost not an interview, but just... Go through the job description because it's going to make your job way easier. Mm -hmm. So it could be somebody you only work with a couple times a month Mm -hmm. or something. But I guarantee you if you – it's almost like cross-training but taking it on yourself. If you really understand the day in the life of that person, Mm -hmm. I guarantee you your job will be not just easier but you will also be more valuable to your team. Yeah, that's a good point. Because Mm – if you use the example of the regional positions mm-hmm. where you know everybody goes on vacation and people cover, those that cross train really well mm-hmm. are the regions that they're flawless. Mm-hmm. And so, if you use that example, no matter where you work, if you really understand what somebody does, mm-hmm. there's just an efficiency level that you unlock. I think that's a really good step one of becoming a natural leader, also. Absolutely. You know, that's that's really a great way to develop yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a that's a that's a great challenge. I like that. Real quick, yeah. Because I've had this conversation multiple times with with people over the years, mm-hmm. and I enjoy it. But I love when when somebody says, "What can I do to X mm-hmm. get promoted?" Oh, right. Or something like that. Yeah. And you just said it. The answer I inevitably come back to is make yourself stand out among your peers now now yep. meaning be the person your peers want want to go to mm-hmm. that's exactly right that's why i said it i mean that that's what i that's what i'm looking for and that's, all the time i just wanted to say it yeah. because i've had that conversation mm-hmm. a bunch of times in my career with people looking they to want grow. more yeah. mm-hmm. and and it's almost like they, what's the magic what, what what are you looking for? Mm-hmm. And it's right in front of your face. Yeah. And it's leading the your peers without officially leading your peers. Yep. How that's you the do answer. it, mm-hmm. that's on you. Yeah. That's the magic. There you go. That's so, exactly right. So there's there's some advice. Just stand out in a way that you're not the loudest necessarily. <laughs> it's just who does people who do people go to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be that. Be that. We have had um, some great feedback and suggestions of things On to talk about yeah. and keep them coming. Yes, please. Yeah. Ask any questions. Give any feedback. We are all ears. Yeah. So. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good week. <laughs>